mysterious criminal who calls himself the Eagle is plotting against the directors of an airplane factory whom he has tried to frighten with warnings written on the sky in smoke and fire. The directors have reason to suspect that the Eagle is Nathan Gregory, owner of a small carnival show, who has accused them of stealing from him an invention that is worth a fortune. Craig McCoy, stunt flyer with the carnival, discovers that the patent on which the directors base their claim to the invention was sold to them by a mechanic named Kelly, a former employee of Gregory's, who is now in jail charged with having murdered one of the directors. Gregory's daughter, Jean, pleads the prisoner, Kelly, to tell the truth and clear her father. Pat, are you sure you're telling the truth? His whole future depends on what you tell now, Pat. All right. I'll tell everything I know. I did sell the plan to Green. But there was another man who knew about it. And he, and he's been trying to cash in on it. Who was it, Kelly? Speak up, Pat. You've got to tell us. signing my own death warrant. But I'll tell for you, Skipper. The man is... The shot came through that window. You two men get out the back way. Get Gene out of here, quick. Why? He's the Eagle. He can't be. He was in the jail when the shot was fired. Kelly wasn't killed. He's made his getaway. You know, he'll probably head for the carnival grounds. You get out there and hide him. He's still in danger. Yeah, listen. What are you going to do? I'm going to the factory and ring the truth out of Danby. Evans Airplane Factory, quick. Anyone? No. Officers! Look! 
Thanks. Say. Someone just phoned in that plane made a forced landing out for the country club. Come on. We've got to work fast. You two follow that police car. Okay. Moore, you come with me to the factory. We've got to stop McCoy. Come on. charge of the boiler room. Call him. Well, I can't locate Mr. Ward, and something's got to be done quick. All right. I'll come down. Don't you never think of nothing? Don't stand there like a dummy. Get over to the factory and tell Craig what happened. Never mind that. Kelly gave me the lowdown on you. You're coming through right now. All right. How much? What do you mean, Danby? If nothing but money will stop the Eagle's crimes, I'm willing to pay my share. Oh, I don't want any money. What do you want, then? I want information. Information that will help me capture the Eagle and put a stop to his crimes. You mean to say Gregory is not the Eagle? Haven't I been telling you so all along? Gregory has been risking his life to find out who's at the bottom of this blackmailing scheme against you and the rest of the directors. Well, if Gregory isn't the Eagle, who is? Well, it's one of the directors of the company. Clark knew which one it was and was on the verge of telling when the Eagle killed him. I was in hopes that you knew something about it. I do know something. There's one man I'm suspicious of. Who's that? I don't like to make such a charge against anyone without more proof. You wait here while I do a little investigating. I tell you, you can't get in here. But they wouldn't let me in the front office. Why then, stay out of here. Good afternoon, Mr. Ames. Hello, Frank. Leave the gate a minute, Frank. And come over here quick. Yes, Mr. Ames. What is it, Mr. Eames? What do you mean, Frank? 
Why did you call me? Why, well, you're dreaming this afternoon. Hey, you! You can't come in here! Get out of here! What did I tell you? Come on! Come on! Kelly's at the carnival, all right, but he won't talk. Why not? Well, he's scared stiff. Gene and the skipper haven't shown up at the carnival yet. Hello? Come up to room 204. Yes, 204. I found the proof. I'm sure of it now. He's the man I suspected. He is, uh... Hello? Come on, Henry. Here, I have a key. All right. What are you doing here? I just heard the attack on Danby over the phone. He found out who the Eagle is. Whose office is this? This is Mr. Evans' office. Surely you don't think that... What else can we think? Don't let Evans leave the building. I believe you're right. We can't afford to take any chances. Get more men. Search the building. Question everyone. Come on, McCoy. Henry and I will wait here in case he comes back. This is all a blind. Somebody's trying to put the blame on Evans. Danby phoned from 204 and this is 206. This is 204. Hello. You better get the plane away quick. The cops are down there now. Now this proves that neither my father nor Craig did the sky riding. It's a radio controlled plane. Yeah, Gregory and his daughter is there, too. You better act quick. The girl is in the plane now, fooling with the control board. to know that Miss Gregory can't fly a plane. He doesn't have to fly this one. It's controlled by radio. I'm sending it up, McCoy, up 5,000 feet above your carnival. And then it's coming down in a death plunge, 300 miles an hour. When it hits... Stall him as long as you can. Where's the call in room 206 coming from? From the laboratory on the roof. Thanks.
mysterious criminal who calls himself the Eagle is plotting against the directors of an airplane factory whom he has tried to frighten with warnings written on the sky in smoke and fire. The directors have reason to suspect that the Eagle is Nathan Gregory, owner of a small carnival show, who has accused them of stealing from him an invention worth a fortune. A bill of sale on which the directors base their claim to the invention has been mysteriously stolen. But Craig McCoy, stunt flyer with the carnival, has traced the theft to one of the directors named Green and has recovered the paper with the aid of his friend Henry, the ventriloquist of the show. Don't move, Evans. Always have two or three strings to your bow, Major. You're a fool. We're in a fine jam now. Give me that bill of sale. Come and get it. I see you got him, but what I want to know is, have you got the papers? Well... No. He dropped it when it fell off the car. And it went in that. Are you sure of that? Absolutely. I saw it go down. A fine mess you've made of things. If you'd followed my instructions, he'd never gotten into the house, let alone getting the bill of sale. So you're the eagle, are you, Green? What do you mean by that, McCoy? I know these two men are working for the eagle, and now I see it's you they're taking orders from. Yeah, well, you can think what you like. It won't do you any good. You're going where you won't have a chance to talk. Throw him in the car. Now, if we could only get a hold of Gregory, we'd have the whole thing in our hands. Well, that's very simple. We'll make McCoy phone Gregory to come up to the office. That's a good idea. Get back to town. Come on, get going, you. All right, but ha, don't hit my hand. Get going, I said. There's the phone, McCoy. Call Gregory and tell him to come down here. You're wasting your time, Green. I'll never do that. I'm not fooling with you, McCoy. I'll give you just three seconds to phone. And after you've shot me, who'll telephone Gregory? He will. Have you forgotten that he's a ventriloquist? He can imitate anybody's voice, including yours. Me double-cross the skipper? Not in a thousand years. One of you two birds is going to phone Gregory, and I don't care which. They can melt lead with one of those things. Wait. Leave him out of this. I'll do what you want. I thought you would. I tell you, Gene, something must have happened to Craig. He can take care of himself, all right, Dad? Hello? Is your father there, Gene? 
Yes, he's here. What? Well, where is he? I just told you he was here. They took him? Who took him? What's the matter? The asylum doctors grabbed Gregory and took him back to the Red Pass Sanitarium. Well, this gums up everything. We've got to get him out of there. You stay here and watch these two birds till we get back with Gregory. Go ahead. Central, where did that call come from? You must trace it. It's a matter of life and death. Craig wouldn't have acted like that if he wasn't in trouble. We've got to find out where he is and try to help him. Hello? Who's talking? Oh, I didn't recognize your voice. Where are Moran Boyle? They've gone out to uh, capture Gregory. I've got McCoy here with me. Yeah. This time I've got everything under control. All right. Goodbye. We've been waiting for you. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I've just received a very important phone call and won't be able to attend the meeting. Hello, Red Pass Sanitarium? Well, those two men that brought Mr. Gregory to you will be back soon asking for him. Good. We want to question those men. Mr. Gregory's test proved him sane. They're crooks. Hold them, will you please? Thanks, I'll be there. Now, Mr. Green, you're going to tell us the truth about that bill of sale. You can't make me talk. Don't you think you'd better talk? I... I told you the truth last night. Danby and I bought the rights from a mechanic named Kelly. Frederick P. Kelly. Can you produce this, Kelly, to back up your statement? I don't know where he is. But I know where he is. He's in jail for murdering Clark. Great, that simplifies everything. Phone Gregory and tell him to meet you and Green at the police station and I'll get more in Boyle. We'll have a final showdown. Go on, get back. We've convinced Gregory that we're the rightful owners of the invention. I'm not so sure of that. You know, Gregory was here when the bill of sale was stolen. Has it ever occurred to you that Gregory might have taken it to destroy our proof of rightful ownership? Not. We've heard the last of Gregory. The last of Gregory. Look. That's Gregory's answer. What can we do against this man? Anthony's threats written by a phantom plane. And those threats have always been followed by death. I'm through. So am I. Why, are you cowards? Quitters? I'm going to carry on this fight if I have to do it all by myself. Go ahead. I'm getting out of here. All right. I'll take over your shares in this company. If you're willing to let them go at my price. What do you mean? Your price. We're going to police headquarters and don't try any monkey business on the way. I'll have a gun in my pocket covering you. Come on. Daddy, Craig's safe. How do you know? Henry just phoned. Craig wants us to meet him at police headquarters right away. Police headquarters? Yes, they've got the Eagle.
you got Gregory back again. Gregory? Oh, yes. You're the gentleman who brought him here. If you'll wait just a moment, I'll let you see him. Take him along. Never mind him. We got to run for it. Don't let him get away. Drop that gun. to police headquarters, Boyle, and don't spare this car. Where's Craig? He'll be along pretty soon. What's this all about, Henry? This is the Eagle. The Eagle? We want to talk to Pat Kelly, and in the presence of witnesses. Well, I don't think there's any objection to that. Donlan, go with him. Why, Gene, Skipper Henry, why, it seems like the whole carnival's come over here to see me. Say, what's he doing here? Oh, what's this all about? Oh, just a little matter of business, Pat. Is this the man, Mr. Green? Yes. That's the man who sold me the invention. Well, what are you saying? That Kelly, my old friend, stole my invention? I, I can't believe it. Well, it's a lie. I don't know anything about it. Kelly, you know you signed a bill of sale for the plans. Well, where is this bill of sale you're talking about? Show me my signature. Georgie was lying. He hasn't got anything to back it up. Oh, Skipper, why should I steal your plans? You've always been my best friend. Pat, are you sure you're telling the truth? My father's whole future depends on what you tell now, Pat. All right. I'll tell everything I know. I did sell the plans to Green. But there was another man who knew about it. And he, and he's been trying to cash in on it. Who was it, Kelly? Speak up, Pat. You've got to tell us. I'm signing my own death warrant. But I'll tell for you, Skipper. The man is... Oh. 